All right, here with my good friend, Montel Schneidergens. I'm related to Ollie. <laughs> Mike Renato with Athletic Motion Golf with our good buddy here, Monty Scheinbloom. And Monty, when we do a lot of playing lessons or when we're out doing playing lessons, there's a certain trend that you're on the West Coast, we're on the East Coast, that a, a, a trend that bridges the gap between those two Oh, coasts. and it's international too. <laughs> um, what is that we see all the time out there? This is a wedge, this is a pitching wedge. Um, I have yet to see on ESPN the world long pitching wedge <laughs> contest. Um, for whatever reason, people think they need to hit their wedges too far. It's funny, we were talking about this off camera. Your, your club head speed's over, well over 120, I'm over 120. Yet, when we do playing lessons, we'll have guys who 15 to 20 miles an hour slower club head speed hit their wedges farther than what we'll hit our wedges. Yeah, I mean, can I hit this pitching wedge 160 yards? Yeah, but I find no, well it hurts for one thing, <laughs> but I find no use for that because the ball goes too high, you can't control the spin or the trajectory, right. and when you're not controlling the spin and trajectory, you start hitting it this way and that way as well. I mean, it's I regularly play with guys that I'm out driving by 50, 80, 100 yards, and then we get into the wedge zone and they're pulling less club than right. I'm pulling. Right. And it's just, you know, guys that are that have that are carrying it 220 yards and pulling gap wedge from 135, they're not helping themselves. Got a great story about that right when we come back. So my dad he got me into golf. I love playing with him. And he's 74 right now. He, he called me last at the end of last season. He plays in about 20 tournaments a year. He called me at the end of last season. He's like, I've got an issue. I was like, what is it? He goes, I need to come in for a lesson. I'm not hitting my lob wedge as far as I need to. I was going, really? What, how far are you hitting it? He said, I'm only hitting it 100 yards. And I was like, Dad, how, how far do you normally hit it? He goes, that's my 115 club. How far do you hit a lob wedge? I mean, I, can't, I, mean, I guess under special circumstances, downwind, downhill, <laughs> in Denver, I'll hit it 100 yards. But 90 is about. It's not about, your 115 club. No. Former long drive champ. When I was 25 years old and swinging 135 to 138 miles an hour on the course, I didn't hit it 115 yards because it's going to go too high, it's going to have too much spin on it, and when you're making a swing that big, you're going to probably get steep on it, have directional yes. problems. I mean, it's all bad. And that's why when we came in, that's what we found out. The ball was, he wanted it to go X, but X also had a lot of this involved uh. in it. So. You're exactly right. So let, let's let's dive. Yes, exactly right. You gotta you gotta turn that 60 degree loft way down to make it go that far. Right. And a, a lot of that's difficult for a lot of players. Well, should be difficult for a lot of players. You shouldn't want. It. I mean, if you're if you're doing that, you're gonna get steep. You're gonna get in front of it. You're gonna do all sorts. You know, it might hurt yourself. Go deep on it. I mean. Well, the cool thing is they give us other options in the bag. Right. <laughs> so one of the things that I like to do is during the playing lessons, is I pull the whole group out to you know 115, 120 yards, and I say, okay, grab your 160 yard club, and they look at me like I've lost my mind. And you know, I'll grab a seven iron from 120, go back to about waist high and bring it in low without a lot of spin, lands on the front of the green, releases to the back middle, and they're like, wow, that was kind of cool. And then it becomes a game. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's you gotta make it fun. How long of a club can you hit this short? And then all of a sudden they find, wait a second. So I thought my pitching wedge was my 140 club, but when I hit it 120, the ball's lower and it doesn't spin in all directions. And, and I'm like, yeah, you know. Well, that's the other thing we hear all the time. It's, I'm, I'm hitting my wedges too high. I need to fly them down. Like, I, I just like, I get this email every week. How do I flight my 60 degree wedge? Don't hit it so hard. Yeah, or hit another club. <laughs> I mean, really, there's, it's, don't develop a swing just for one shot when you've got other options that are gonna be easier to do. I can comfortably, without hurting myself, hit this pitching wedge 155 or 160 mm -hmm. yards. My stock distance where I just like, all right, I pull it and just make a swing is 135. And can go as low. Oh, when I practice on the range, 
the, the, the last hour of my practice session, half hour, 45 minutes of my practice session, I'm out there hitting this club about 80 or 90 yards. You know, just kind of comfortably taking it back, maybe the left arm parallel a little short of that, and just leisurely getting through impact. And, you know, the ball's coming out head high right. and totally under control. Which has plenty of spin. Plenty of spin. And it's going to stop on most greens that any of us play on. Right. Right? I don't think too many of us are at Augusta. No. But even there, you can still generate enough spin. Absolutely. And it, it's certainly one of the deals where, we were talking about this again off camera, where the, the things that we like to have golfers do is like, Okay, so, all right, I get the idea. I'm going to take more club, but they'll take one more club and try to feather five yards off of it. And that's a, that takes a lot, a lot of practice to be able to develop it really a five-yard skill. Yeah, and the other thing that I see is, and this is a big one, they're like, okay, Monty, I'll hit. Okay, so you say I shouldn't hit my pitching wedge so far. And then they get up there and they're like, right. <laughs> you know, they take their full backswing right. and then they try and slow the club down at impact. And then, oh, see, that's why I don't do that. You know, right. it's a, you got to learn how to manage the length well, of your backswing. Most golfers are going to be more accurate pitching the ball, hitting a green than they will from 120 yards. Correct. So if you develop that pitch, pitch swing farther away from the green, I agree. you're still going to keep a lot of that accuracy. Absolutely. All right. So let's come back with some, a couple really good drills to help kind of ingrain this softer wedge swing that is certainly going to help you write down lower scores. All right, Monty, so what's a couple good drills that we can use to soften these wedge swings but still keep the speed up, still keep the spin up? I like to, what I, I call it the two-thirds drill. Okay. Uh, I take a left arm parallel and have the, or have the golfer left arm parallel backswing and try to hit the club two-thirds of its regular distance. Okay. So for my pitching wedge, which is 135 yards, I try and hit it 100. Okay. Okay. And this is, this is you, know, you know, this is kind of an unrelated issue. But when people learn to manage the acceleration of their arms and link up to the, to the body on this, there's actually a side benefit. Because most golfers, when they try to smash a driver really hard, they don't link up. They don't understand how to accelerate their arms properly. And when they start to learn this little two-thirds wedge drill, they actually start gaining driving distance. You're so true. You're so and true. It's, you know, it's Some kind of, the of best ironic. wedge drills are the best full swing Absolutely, drills. Absolutely, because then you learn how to sequence properly. You learn how to accelerate your arms at the right time, not too early, not too late. And then when you pull the driver out, then you have that, that same awareness and you can speed up. And this is, this is legitimate, real practice. Yes. To develop this skill. Like, you, you work at a really busy uh, range. You see golfers out there all day. How many guys do you see doing this? Zero. Zero. And I, t I tell my, my clients all the time, I say, go to a tour event. Yes, they practice with their driver and right. their three wood, but, you know, I even take out seven and eight iron. You know, seven irons like my 180, 185 club. I'm out there hitting seven irons, 115, mm -hmm. 120 yards and learning, you know, the motion. What that does for your swing awareness we talked about earlier yes. what that does for your just synchronization and what that does for your skill building yeah is it's huge it's, it's huge it's huge but you don't see anybody doing nobody it. everybody my favorite thing that i've ever seen on the internet was a guy who was out there saying go get a blade one on an old blade one iron and if you can hit that you can hit anything <laughs> And, you know, and that's the, that's the attitude. Pe well, the driver is the longest club. If I can learn right. to hit this straight, I can hit it. it. It works the other way around. You work from the low levels up, not from the high levels down. Scott, we work with Scott Hamilton. He works with more tour players than anybody. And he always tells us good golf is played off speed. Yes. Like nobody, you, I won't say nobody, you have that one round a year where every ball lies on your stock number. Yes. And then the other rounds you play in the year are all off speed shots. Correct. So developing this skill, having the club in the right place to hit the ball solidly and pretty straight is, is worth the squeeze. It, it really is. And plus, and this is something that, that, that they get right away. If you're out there busting drivers as hard as you can, half hour you're worn out. You can, yeah. you can sit on the range all day long and go like this with wedge and never wear yourself out. So you also, you don't punish your body as That's much true. and you increase 
the amount of practice time you know you can devote from an energy level. And like you said, it's amazing how that translates to yeah, a full swing. It's a big deal. It's hard to to bus driver, bus driver, and we've all done this: kill a drive, a career drive of the day, and then you got that wedge shot that you missed the green on. Yeah, it's. But you can go practice. I can warm up hitting wedges and then go with the first go bus drive. drive great. Absolutely. Yep, so yep. all right, so let's dive right into it. So we're gonna do the two thirds drill. Yes. So what it, what do you like to feel is is kind of governing the speed of this? Um, for me, I like to the shorter swing is huge. Because mm -hmm. if you take the same long back swing and then try and cut the distance down, it, it, it's a mess. It's it's tough to decelerate into the ball. It, it really is tough. And and on the shorter swing, you're really not getting your body in this, you know, separated position when you're trying to kill a driver. You're already kind of linked up. So what I like to feel is I like to manage the speed. I, I like to feel that everything is moving at the same speed. So 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 important. You know, because when everything is moving at the same speed, it's hard to get disconnected and disjointed. When we're trying to hit driver, for instance, right? We need all these things separated so they can Absolutely. help us produce speed. We're not trying to hit a pitching wedge 100 yards. We don't need all these speed producers. You don't so, want the separation. So don't introduce them. Nope. So, you know, I will, whenever I'm struggling with my swing, I'll take out somewhere between a pitching wedge and a seven iron, and I will go down the ladder until like, okay, I can do this. There are some days when I'm struggling with my swing where I'll up, be up here going like this, because on that day, that's all I got, man. Right, right. You know, that's all I got. If I try to hit it harder than that, I'm, yeah. you know, doing all sorts. So golfers tend to get mad and speed up and want to kill. And I get it. It's a frustrating game, but that's not how you get better. It's, yeah, you, it's you, counterintuitive. You work your way down until you can actually perform the shot, then work your way back yeah. up. So, you know, the two-thirds shot. So here's my 100-yard pitching wedge. You know, not a lot of effort. I'm not gonna wear myself out doing that. And, you know, it was low. That's how you fly it. If I'm walking by you on the range and I don't know what club you have in your hands and I just see you poke that ball out there like that, I'm saying this guy knows how to hit a wedge shot because it had that flighted wedge. There was not a lot of effort in your hands. You weren't trying to, to really <laughs> no, lean it not. forward and a big, big thing of sod didn't take off. That's, was, that's huge. Yeah. Whenever people try and flight, bring the ball down, so to speak, they're trying to deal off the club, trying to hit down on it more, playing it back in their stance and trying to lean on it. And that just is all sorts of bad. Yeah. You know? Usually get the opposite effect. Yeah. Shoots it up yeah. in the air because your, your brain's like, well, this isn't going to get airborne and gives it one of those. That's right. So let's go. Let's put you on the spot here. So let's go up to a nine iron. Kay. Same distance. Nine iron, same distance. All right. So obviously, I'd say within two yards and a little lower ball flight. Absolutely. Eight. The, the, the thing that people need to realize is, and it, it, it's, it's an obvious thing, but we lose our I, I always say, whenever we pull into the golf course parking lot, 90% <laughs> of our brain is held in escrow outside the parking lot until we leave. Speed creates spin. And when you create more spin and more speed, that makes the ball go right. that way, you know? So let's see how- so 100 yard, eight iron. 100 yard, eight iron. Lower, let's say about 103. Uh, maybe 105. And it, it looked like it hit the flag stick. But, so. but, you know, and perfect example. I went a little deep on that mm -hmm. one, okay? That wasn't my best swing, but that was actually the best shot okay. of the three. That is literally, what, a foot from that, that 100 yard pin right yeah. there because I was under control. And I always tell people, here's how you know you're doing something right. Anybody, any golfer at any skill level, on their best shot, on their best swing, they get results. Right. You know you're doing something right when you make a mistake like I just did there and you still get Your a positive. bad swings get good results. You get good positive yes. results on a bad swing. So I think the takeaway here is, and again, this is go. This goes into such fundamental skill building, right? Yes. This isn't an, 
a, a positional drill. No. This is skill building. Learn how to hit your club short. Yeah. Right. Most people, 99% of the people or more, try to hit their clubs farther. Right. right. That's not building a skill, that's just efforting more. Right. Learn the skill of how to hit an eight iron two clubs shorter or three clubs shorter in your case, maybe four, and develop that skill because that everything you gotta do to hit that eight iron really well is going to just pay off dividends when you start going full swing. You know, the, the, hitting the eight iron 100 yards, unless you never in your life have hit the ball in the trees, you better know that shot. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's it, This skill of doing that, flighting these balls down is certainly gonna pay off in many ways all over the golf course. So give that a try. Let us know in the comments how it goes. We'd love to hear from you. We'll see you guys on the next one. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and give it a like. Also, if you have any questions about today's video or you have an idea of a video that you wanted to shoot, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. We read every single comment. We also respond to the comments. So again, leave us a comment if you have any questions or there's anything you'd like to see. Now, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. We have videos coming out every single week and we don't want you to miss one. So by clicking subscribe, that ensures you're notified right away when a new video comes out. And hey, if you wanna add instant distance to your drive, and we all do, everybody wants more distance, go ahead and click the link in the pinned comment below. You're gonna see a link. Click on it, it's gonna take you to a page. You're gonna enter your name and email address. We're gonna send you an email where you're gonna get access to instant distance, which is a video training that we put out. We know it's gonna help you. We know we're gonna see you farther down the fairway.